Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about yet another unusual star, this star you see on the screen right here, known as Methusela star. This is by far the oldest star we've discovered that actually kind of conflicts with the age of the universe. In other words, it seems to be even older than the universe itself. Let's discuss this star and welcome to What The Math. So what exactly is this unusual star? Well, it does have a more scientific name, HD 140283, and it's only approximately 200 light years away from our planet uh, Earth. I'm going to show it to you visually in Universe Sandbox in a few seconds. But what's interesting about this particular star is that it's sort of known as the um, subgiant star, or a kind of a transition stage between the main sequence of a star, basically the main life of a star, and the red giant phase when the star becomes super super big and swallows everything. Now this is a stage right between them, so in other words, this star is sort of approaching its uh, last few years, last few millions and billions of years of life, but at the same time, um, it seems to have lived a very long life already. Now if this right here is our own sun, this is kind of where um, the Methuselah star would be. I'm going to place it at an approximate distance away from the sun, just so you can see it visually. I'm also going to pinpoint some of the more well-known stars, like right here, this is Alpha Centauri, at a distance of just over 4 light years, Sirius is right here, and a few other stars you may have uh, known about before, like Procyon, Altair, and right around here, this is a distance of about 200 light years, this is the Methuselah star. By the way, Methuselah is actually a name of a character from the Bible that was supposedly something like over 900 years old, so basically the oldest character in the Bible, which is why uh, some of the oldest objects in space are usually named Methuselah. There's actually a planet I've talked about a few years ago, and this is the star that's even older than that planet. Now, let's first of all, let's talk about how we actually discovered the age of this star. Because this star is in a transition stage, it's actually uh, relatively easy to use chemical analysis to estimate its age. And so the scientists, um, approximately 10 years ago, used the uh, luminosity, the temperature, and the chemical composition of the star, specifically the amount of oxygen inside of it, to try to um, estimate, using other well-known stars, how old this would be. And they discovered a few really interesting things. First of all, this star is surprisingly bright for um, a typical uh, sub-dwarf star. Now, normally they don't really get that bright unless they're really old. And I'm actually going to talk about how we determine age of stars separately, but usually it's related to luminosity, the brightness of the actual star. So this star is about three and a half times brighter than our own sun. Even though its mass is probably around the same as our sun, maybe just a little bit more massive. At the same time, um, it has a tremendous amount of oxygen in it, it has a lot of helium as well. All of this suggests that it has actually burned a lot of hydrogen and has created a lot of these other um, elements that will now turn it into a red giant. But at the same time, um, it has a very, very low uh, amount of non-hydrogen elements. In other words, it's very, very low in metallicity, which actually suggests that this is what's known as a population two star. Now. What is the population to start? What does that even mean? Well, let me once again explain it to you using a visualization here. And we're going to start uh, by placing three stars next to this one. We're going to place an extremely large and massive population three star right here. This star is super, super big. It's extremely powerful, but it's made entirely out of, out of hydrogen. It has nothing else but hydrogen in it. These stars existed right after the creation of the universe. And then they all went supernova, they all got destroyed, and none of them exist anymore, but they all resulted in basically uh, the material, or they created the material that was then used to create other stars. And in this case, it was the population two stars, very similar to the Methuselah right here. These stars were, um, or are, still around, there's actually a few of them we've discovered, they're all super super old, and uh, they were all created just a few million to possibly a billion years after the Big Bang. 
Now, for the most part, all of them have one similarity. They're what's known as metal poor. They have a lot of hydrogen, but they don't have enough of other stuff, like not enough oxygen, not enough lithium, not enough, well, really anything. Uh, most of the other materials here are in very, very little amounts. And these stars then go supernova as well and create population uh, one stars, which are basically our sun and very similar stars and pretty much the majority of stars in our galaxy. And these are usually uh, relatively metal rich. Uh, they also have obviously uh, terrestrial planets around them because to create uh, terrestrial planets, you need uh, silicates, you need um, iron, and all of that stuff is technically metallic. It's not a hydrogen. So um, usually terrestrial planets are found around these population one stars, whereas you would usually find uh, gas giants or basically hydrogen planets around population two stars. Now, so this star is, as of today, uh, the oldest we've discovered. We measured the luminosity and we measured the um, actual materials on the inside and determined that it's about 14 or just over 14 billion years old. Uh, interestingly, the age of the universe, the estimate for the age of the universe is 13.8 billion years. So how is that even possible? Well, that's of course where um, we have to think about the possible errors in measurements. Now, there's actually quite a few errors that could have been made here. One of them was related to the luminosity. One of them was related to the actual uh, motion of the star through uh, space, which actually was used to determine uh, luminosity and also uh, its other parameters. And we also may have made mistakes in measuring the actual amount of material there. And then lastly, there could have been some other unknown variables that could have uh, changed the actual errors. So unofficially, the age of the star is 14.46 billion years plus minus 0.8. In other words, it's still within the parameters for the age of the universe, as long as you take the error into consideration. But nevertheless, this is the oldest star we've discovered so far. And it's also a star that's still around and it's still going to be uh, kicking it around for quite a while because it hasn't reached the red giant stage just yet. And in the next few uh, hundreds of millions of years, it's going to become a red giant and it's going to become very, very bright and uh, will be quite uh, well visible from Earth. Now, given enough time, we'll definitely be able to uh, measure the um, age of the star a lot more accurately. And because it's relatively close to our planet and to basically other stars in the vicinity, we can then use the star to determine ages of other objects nearby. As a matter of fact, this is why the scientists are so excited because they can use stars similar to this, and there's actually quite a lot of them around in the neighborhood, uh, to then uh, use them as a kind of a standard candle uh, of measurement for age of objects uh, and we potentially can find even older objects based on the estimates from this particular star but until then all we know about this star is that it's definitely a very very exciting find and it definitely kind of contradicts the age of the universe itself and uh, for all we know maybe just maybe will lead to uh, a new analysis that will guide us to determining the more accurate age of other objects in the universe and possibly even help us discover new techniques on how to measure age uh, of various objects in a galaxy because it actually is kind of hard anyway that's all i wanted to mention in this video i wanted to talk about this unusual star and this unusual discovery from just under 10 years ago thank you so much for watching and if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who loves learning about space and wants to learn through video games, and maybe even potentially consider supporting this channel on Patreon, because you know, it does kind of help a lot. I'll see you guys in the next video tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else about mysteries of space and the universe, and space out, and as always, bye bye. Oh, and by the way, in one of the future videos, I'm also going to explain to you how exactly we measure the age of most stars, because it's a very cool concept. Click that bell button to be notified about the upcoming video so that you don't miss it by accident. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.